In this lesson, we want to talk about how to find the arc length on a circle, and also we'll look at how to find the area of a sector of a circle. All right, in the last lesson, we learned how to measure our angles using radians instead of degrees. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our little formula, and we're going to get a formula for finding the arc length on a circle. So let's recap what we learned in the last lesson. So if our angle theta is a central angle, of a circle of radius r, and theta intercepts an arc of length s, then we can obtain our radian measure of theta as, we say that theta is equal to s over r, okay? Now in this first example, what I've done is I've made this arc length equal to r exactly. So this guy right here is the same as the measure of our radius, okay? So when this happens, you can plug in an r in the place of s. r over r is, of course, 1, right? If we said this is r over r, this is equal to exactly 1. So the measure of your angle theta in this particular case is 1 radian. Now, in many cases, you're not going to have a measure of 1 radian, okay? So now our arc length here is going to just be represented with s, okay? So it's no longer equal to r. So in this case, we just go back to that little ratio, and we say that theta is equal to s over r, okay? So s over r. But what this is telling me is that I could rearrange this equation, okay, and I could solve for s, I could solve for s, given the fact that I know the measure of my angle theta in radians, and I know r, which is the length of my radius. So what I do is just multiply both sides by r, okay, by r, and I'm going to get my formula, which is that s, again, that's the length of the arc here, is going to be equal to this cancels, so I would have r times theta, okay? And theta has to be given in radians for this to work. If you get something in degrees, you just need to convert it, or you could use another formula from geometry, which I'll cover in a little while. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So we have an angle here, which is marked as theta, and theta is going to be equal to, in terms of radians, pi over 4, okay? And then we have our radius r, okay? So r is going to be equal to, we're going to have 12 miles here. So I'm just going to put mi to abbreviate miles. So what we want to do for this problem is find the length of this arc here, okay? Find that length. So again, how do we do this? We're just going to use our little formula. We're going to say that s, okay, I'll mark this with s, is equal to what? It's equal to r, this radius measure, okay, which is 12 miles in this case, times theta, okay? And theta in this case is pi, pi over four, okay? So very, very simple math here. I'm gonna cancel this 12 with this four and get a three. And basically what I'd have here is three pi miles, okay? So S here is equal to three pi miles. And you could write out miles or you could put mi, it doesn't really matter. I think I'll just stay consistent and put mi there and leave it as an abbreviated version. Now, depending on the context of the situation, you might wanna give it an exact answer like this, or you might want to punch up three times pi into a calculator and get an approximation and write it that way. It just depends on what your teacher's asking for. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So let's suppose that now our angle theta, our angle theta here, okay, is given as 135 degrees. Okay, so now we're working with degrees. And then R, the radius, let's say that this is 12 inches. So 12 inches. Again, I'm just going to abbreviate that. So what do we do here? Well, one strategy, if you want to use the formula that we just talked about, is to first convert this into radians. So remember how to do that. Pi radians is exactly equal to 180 degrees. So I would say 135 degrees times. Remember how to do this. You want the units that you want to cancel in the denominator. So I'm going to put 180 degrees down here, and I'm going to put pi radians up here. You don't need to write radians. So I'm going to cancel this with this. So degrees are gone. So the answer I get here is going to be in terms of radians now. Okay. So let's think about 135 and 180. What's going to be common between the two? Well, each would be divisible by 45. If I divided this guy by 45, I would get exactly 3. If I divided this guy by 45, I would get exactly 4. 
So this turns out to be 3 pi over 4 in terms of radians, okay? So I'll just erase this real quick. And I'm just going to erase 135 degrees and put 3 pi over 4 for radians. And now we're basically good to go. Again, we're trying to figure out what is the length of this guy, okay? And I'm just going to mark that and say that this is S, okay? So S is going to be equal to, again, just multiply these guys together. So 3 pi over 4 times 12 inches, okay? And again, what's going to cancel here? 12 cancels with 4 and gives me 3. So you're going to have 3 times 3, which is 9, times pi times inches. So you can say this is 9, okay? This is 9 pi inches. Again, you can write that out or leave it abbreviated, whatever you want to do. All right, so before we move on, I just want to talk a little bit about how you can do this with it being in degree mode. Okay, it's a very simple formula. All you want to do, you probably remember this from geometry, but you just want to take 135 degrees and divide it by 360 degrees. So in other words, you're taking 135 degrees, which is the measure of this angle, okay? And dividing it by 360 degrees, which is the measure of one complete rotation, right? The angle that's formed by a complete circle. And then I would just multiply it by, remember the circumference of the circle is the distance all the way around, okay? So the formula for that is going to be 2 times pi times r, okay? So if we do 135 degrees divided by 360 degrees, your units would cancel. 135 and 360 are each divisible by 45. If I divide this by 45, I get 3. If I divide this by 45, I get 8, okay? So let's just write this as 3 eighths. Let's just write this as 3 eighths times this guy. So now I know that I can cancel this 8 with this 2. That would give me a 4 down here. The R here, if I plug in for R, it's 12 inches, right? So this is times 12 inches. So what else can I do? I can cancel this 12 with this 4, and I'm going to get a 3. And if I multiply across, I'm going to get 3 times 3, which is 9, okay, times pi times inches. So I would still get an S that's equal to 9 pi inches. So it's the same thing, and we can write it out and say that it's the same thing as this. So S is equal to 9 pi inches, right? So those guys are the same result. So either way you want to do this, it's going to give you, again, the same result. It's just a matter of which way you prefer. All right, what we want to do now is talk about how to find the area of a sector of a circle. So we've already seen that a complete circle or one full rotation forms an angle with a measure that's 360 degrees or in terms of radians, it's going to be two pi radians. So you can see this guy, one complete rotation or one complete circle, it's two pi radians, okay? Now, if we think about the formula for the area of a circle, most of us know this from geometry, the area of a complete circle here is pi times the radius squared. So now, what if we wanted the area for a piece of the circle? Okay, so not the whole thing. So a sector of a circle is the portion of the interior of a circle intercepted by a central angle. So visually, you can see on the screen, this looks like a piece of pi, okay? So how do we find, how do we find the area for this guy right here? Well, let's think about the formula, and I'm just going to put A for area. Let's think about the formula for a whole circle. Again, it's pi times r squared. Okay, so now that's for a 360 degree angle, or again in radians, 2 pi. Okay, so what I do here is I think about the fractional amount of this guy. So I can take theta, okay, which is the measure of this angle in radians, and divide it by 2 pi, which is the measure of, again, a complete circle or one full rotation in terms of radians. So if I multiply this fractional amount here by this area of a circle formula, I'm going to be good to go, okay? Now notice that you can cancel this with this, and I can say that the area is going to be equal to what? Let's go ahead and say this is 1 half times, we'll do theta times r squared. And there's different ways to write this, but most textbooks will write it in this way, so that's how I'm going to present it. Now what's important here is that theta be a central angle, okay? and that the theta also be given in terms of radians. If it's not, again, you've got to convert from degrees to radians to use this formula. All right, let's take a look at an example. So we have our angle theta, we have our radius r. Theta is going to be given to us as 3 pi over 2 
The radius R is going to be given to us as 9 meters. You can write out meters or you can just put M for meters. That's the same abbreviation. And again, what are we trying to find? We want to find the area of inside of here. Okay, and I'm not going to highlight this perfectly, but you get the idea. Okay, so we're trying to find that area. Now let me just erase that. So how do we do this? Again, we're just going to use the formula. So again, the formula here, you can write A for area. We'll say this is 1 half times R squared times your theta. Okay, so I'm just going to plug in. What is R in this case? It's 9 meters. Okay, so your area would be equal to 1 half times, I'm going to plug in 9M. M is for meters. And both of those are going to get squared. Remember, you got to square your units as well. And then times your theta, which is 3 pi over 2. Let me scroll down a little bit and get some room going. So my area here is 1 half times. The 9 gets squared. It's 81. The meters get squared. So you could write this as square meters or meters squared. Or you could just put m squared for short. So m squared. And then times your 3 pi over 2. Okay, so can we cancel anything? No, it doesn't look like we can. So we're going to say that the area, the area is going to be equal to, we're going to say that 81 times 3 is 243. Okay, then times your pi, and then this will be over, 2 times 2 is 4, and this will be in terms of square meters, where you can just write m squared. Again, m is the abbreviation for meters, and we know it's being squared. Okay, so you could write meters out and square it like that. You can put square meters or meter squared if you want to write it out. Any of those would work, but make sure that you square the units and you show that in some way. All right, let's take a look at one more. So suppose now that theta is given to us as 60 degrees, and the radius r is going to be given to us as 13 yards. So I'm going to put yd to abbreviate yards. So let's go ahead and say that the area, again, is equal to 1 half times your theta times your radius squared. Now, again, theta has to be given in terms of radians, okay? So we need to convert this guy into a radian measure. So I'm going to take 60 degrees and multiply it by, remember, pi radians equals 180 degrees. So I'm going to put pi up top, I'm going to put 180 degrees at the bottom, and I'm just going to cancel, okay? So this would cancel with this and leave me exactly 3, okay? So this would be pi over 3, this would be pi over 3, okay? So let's erase this, and let's think about this now. So we're going to have the area is equal to 1 half times, you've got your pi over 3, times the radius, which is 13 yards being squared. So don't forget about those units. It's very important. So we're going to say that the area is equal to, can anything cancel? No. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that 13 squared is 169. So this would be 169 times pi, okay? I'll deal with the yards in a moment, over your 6. And then yard squared, again, you could write square yards, you could write yard squared, however you want to do this. I'm just going to put YD for the abbreviation of yards, and then I'm going to put a squared like this. So the area here would be 169 pi over 6 square yards, or again, yards squared.